and welcome back to another edition of the Osceola's Reeling Them In Recruiting Report. And as always, I am joined by Osceola recruiting analyst and recruiting expert, Charles Fishbein, who we call Fish. Fish, how's everything in South Florida? Doing great, man. Well, it's been a while since we talked, but uh, obviously dead period ended last week. So kids are back on campuses. Uh, Florida State had a couple of uh, prospects on campus already this week, having a big legacy weekend, uh, recruiting weekend on Saturday, where there will be some former or future NFL Seminoles there to interact with uh, 25 and 2026 recruits. If it's similar to last year where they had Jameis Winston or Jermaine Johnson there. But uh, we're going to start with your stock up and stock down fish, which is at, uh, on the Osceola, at the Osceola.com or floridastate.rivals.com before we publish that this morning. So if you want to read everything that Fish had to say, uh, you can certainly go there. But uh, Fish, uh, obviously a lot going on. Kids are uh, starting to narrow down uh, their list of potential schools. They're starting to take more visits. And, of course, one guy uh, is going to come off the board today that was on your stock up, stock down report, and that is linebacker Daryl Duke Johnson from – North Georgia. He is uh, down to five schools. Uh, obviously, Florida State, Alabama, Florida, Miami. I think there are Tennessee's involved in there somewhere. But he's going to make his commitment at 5 p.m. today. And I know you and I both share similar thinking and have people that have told us similar things within the industry. What's your expectations at 5 p.m. today for Duke Johnson? Yeah, I think he's going to end up a Alabama Crimson Tide. And um, this was a kid that FSU had gotten on early and they were kind of leading for him and most in the industry thought he was going to end up a seminal, but um, you know, recruiting now, you know, where you finish now doesn't really mean as much anymore. Um, yeah. The calendar is sped up and guys have to make quicker decisions, but until they actually have to sign on the dotted line, um, this thing, I still expect to go uh, the distance. Yeah, and after what we've seen two of the last three years or two of the last four years with Florida State, at, you know, having kids flip on uh, signing day, and uh, obviously we've saw, seen that happen at other uh, programs as well across the country, probably a lot more this past year than I can remember, Fish. A lot of guys flipping on the day they were actually going to sign, flipping from the school they were committed to. So certainly this is not over. I think a lot of people anticipate that uh, – Duke's recruitment will go on. I know he's a high priority for Florida State, who really needs to have a strong year recruiting linebackers. And of course, you know, listen, he was on Georgia's campus this weekend or this past week, this past weekend, and did not get a Georgia offer. So obviously, uh, that could be another school that could get involved later in the year as uh, they continue to evaluate uh, Duke uh, Duke's progress into his senior year. Uh, but certainly, uh, listen, that, that was that was kind of the stock, uh, one of your stock down guys. But let's let's talk a little bit about your stock up guys. And one of those guys and listen, uh, you and I talk about this all the time. Don't don't tell me what a player says or a prospect says. Show me what he does. And Alvin Henderson, the running back from Elba, Alabama, uh, by all accounts, Fish, it looks like this right now is a fight between Florida State and Auburn. And what are your thoughts on his recruitment and Alvin as a player. Yeah. I mean, I think you had brought him up a, a little over a year ago and you just have to turn on the film and yep. you can see why uh, everybody likes him. He's got to be one of the top running backs in the country. Um, there was that kid from Arizona. I liked a lot last year. I think Alvin's in that same type of um, talent atmosphere. Uh, he's just a special talent. He can, he has the ability to break off long runs and go the distance from anywhere on the field. He can run with power or finesse. Um, he has good vision. He, he has all the tools to be a very special back at the next level. And you can see why Florida state's recruiting him at a, at a high level. And Auburn's always had success recruiting running back. So anytime they like a kid, you got to like them as well. Yeah. We uh, fish, we kind of knew Auburn would have a pickup in their recruitment uh, when Hugh freeze got to town and they have certainly, uh, been a program that's been hot. Uh, but, you know, listen, he has mentioned – can you hear me, Fish? Yes, I hear you. It's yeah. loud and he, clear, man. Yeah, he, he has mentioned uh, before uh, that, you know, it's not so much about the boundaries of a state, right? He's talked about the fact that there's no difference between the distance from Elba to Tallahassee and then there's Elba to Auburn. So this is not necessarily a thing where 
you're really worried about getting him out of his home state, but he has made mention that obviously distance is a factor, but not a factor between Florida State and Auburn. So uh, I like where they sit with him. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I have not confirmed him being back on campus this weekend. I think that would be big uh, for him, but uh, uh, for FSU, if they could get him back on campus. But I, 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 I agree with you. I like where they sit with him, and I think that's going to be another one that goes down to the wire unless we get a surprise commitment. All right, then your second stock up guy was Elias Williams. Uh, listen, uh, he is a committed. He's committed to Georgia. Another big tight end from the Peach State, 6'7", 235. Why do you think Florida State's still involved with him despite his Georgia commitment? I mean, we've talked about it. He's been on campus. I think he's supposed to get back on campus. I had a chance. To, I went to a Miami practice uh, before they went on spring break, and he was there. He's every bit of 6'6". I mean, he's a good-looking prospect. He looks like what you want a big-time uh, talent to look like. I get it. George has had a ton of success with tight ends, uh, but so has Coach Norvell at every stop that he's been at. Uh, he was able to switch Landon Thomas last year. Uh, if Elias keeps ending up on Florida State's campus, I like that the, their chances of flipping him. Yep, uh, I, I agree with you there. And then, of course, another guy you're high on is Zaire Addison. And he's another guy that has uh, – he's from Riverview, Florida, down there in the Tampa area. Uh, obviously, another four-star guy. A guy that's been on campus multiple times, Fish, and a guy that uh, is supposed to be back on campus this weekend. Yeah, you know, and you know the state of Florida, there's just not a ton of, you know, top-end talent on the offensive line. So anytime there are top guys, you definitely want to beat the in-state schools for them. Uh, he's a guy – he's another kid. He went to the uh, Rivals camp last year, uh, looks apart, uh, great kid. You meet him, he's very – he's a respect – He's very respectful. Um, you speak to him. He's knowledgeable about the game. You can tell that um, he really likes Coach Atkins. Every time you see an interview with him, he mentions Coach Atkins and the relationship he has. And one thing that's been shown is when Coach Atkins has a really good relationship and those kids talk him up, they usually tend to lean uh, towards Florida State. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But, yeah, he's a kid, again, uh, kind of like Mario Nash Jr. from Mississippi. They're always on – it seems like they're always on Florida State's campus. And, obviously, they like those big, long bodies that both those guys have. So, uh, it's another good piece of news for Florida State. I think a uh, another guy we all feel good about for Florida State is Myron Charles, a defensive tackle from Port Charlotte, 6'4", 290. I started hearing about his interest in Florida State uh, probably even before the beginning of his la his uh, junior season last year. Uh, he's a kid you've seen fish. Just your thoughts on Myron and where yeah. he is with Florida State? Yeah, I first actually saw him as a freshman at Port Charlotte, and he wasn't even on anybody's prospect sheets. You know, you you see kids that size that move that well, and then you look down the roster and it says freshman next to him. You're like, all right, let me keep an eye on him. You always question sometimes your ability like to forecast that guy's for, that far out and i always like to circle those types of names and look back and say all right did i hit or miss but he started getting those offers from lsu alabama fsu came in um you at the under our armor uh camp the one thing you saw he's very uh quick off the football uses his hands well you can see the upside and why florida state likes him He's a player that could be very good once he gets in a college weight program, starts to learn how to use proper technique. He has good hands. He's very violent. Um, you can see he moves guys off the ball when he when he uses his hands. So the talent's there. Florida State has a major need for defense alignment, and Myron Charles does have the Seminoles leading for his services at this time. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, I, I, I agree. I think that uh, everything that I've heard from you, everything that he has said to us after his visits, everything I've heard from people in the uh, Port Charlotte area, and uh, it looks like Florida State's in a really good spot with him. A guy I know a little bit less about than Myron, but you know a lot about is uh, wide receiver Joshua Moore from West Bow or Broward, excuse me, 6'3", 200. Uh, you, you feel like he's one of the best receivers in the state this year. Yeah, you know, he goes to a school that's not really well known for uh, pushing out talent. This is probably the best prospect they've ever had at that school, Wes Broward. He's a type of kid, if he was out of St. Thomas or a Heritage, I think basically he'd be close to a five-star. His hands are huge. I mean, the one thing I want to shake his hands at the Under Armour camp, 
and um, he was saying that he he, he basically hit that they don't have gloves that fit his hands. Um, he has to go get like custom gloves. So that's the type of kid, you know, he's got big hands. He could catch everything. He just snatches the ball um, out of the air. I, like I said, uh, on the stock up, stop down, he reminds me a little bit of Willie Hall said that uh, I'm sure you remember came out of uh, Titusville, went to Florida state um, early on uh, in Jimbo's career, but he's a kid that has all the physical tools. He's a big, physical receiver uh, he can block he can catch the ball he he runs good routes he's got pretty good speed but overall i definitely think he's one of the top receivers in the state of florida yeah and then of course our last guy we're going to talk about as far as stock up is one of my favorite players the definitely the my favorite that i saw play in person this year is the athlete db played quarterback for tampa berkeley prep led him to the state championship and that's dallas golden yeah, I mean, you and Jerry were there, so like, you don't need my opinion on this. You guys mm-hmm. saw him. He his team was not as talented as Miami Norland. He put them on his back and basically did everything. Him and the running back, but he really was the main reason why Berkeley Prep pulled the upset off. Um, anytime you could dominate a state title game uh, like he did and lead them to a win, I always I always harken back to what. Urban Meyer said when he was recruiting players, he really looked at like what they did in the playoffs and what they did in state finals. And if you go off of what he's saying, then Dallas Golden should be at the top of that recruiting board. Yeah, listen, uh, he he was there were a lot of great players that played in those state championship games here in Tallahassee this year. And uh, I thought he was as good as any player in any classification. And I really hope that uh, I hope you're right that Florida State does get in on Dallas uh, because he is a heck of a football player. And I don't know where he's going to end up in college. I don't know whether he'll end up at running back, wide receiver, corner. Uh, but the kid's going to play football wherever he goes. There's no doubt about that. He, I think that was the that, – wasn't that the team that had the obnoxious parent that was sitting next, right in front of us? Yes, yes, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, he's yeah. he's the type of kid that you recruit and worry about where to put him once on campus. But, yeah, he the we had the one parent – that it kept turning around and basically, I right, look at that, look at that, you know. And we were like, "Oh my god!" I, I thought you were going to strangle him, and I would have just, you know, t- yeah. tossed him overboard after that. Well, luckily, luckily, his companion was more fun to talk to than he was, so that probably spared <laughs> spared us a little bit. All right, so let's go to stock down. Now, listen, there's a lot of reasons people you rate people a stock down. A uh, they're, they may not have any interest in Florida State or interest may not be as strong. Florida State's not interest may not be as strong. And then obviously this is a math game, right? Uh, you can only recruit so many players at one position. So you get on a hot streak with a couple. You can't you don't recruit the third guy quite as hard. Uh, in this case, we're talking about Osman Chroma from the running back from Leesburg, Lee County, Georgia, 511, 200. I know listen, his, his film is incredible. Uh, yeah. But just why, I mean, obviously, I think this is one of those math equations, right? Uh, who they're hot with means, you know, they, they got you got to play your hand, whatever hand you're dealt. And right now, they feel good about Henderson and Byron Lewis from American Heritage. But just talk to us a little bit about where you, where you think this could lead with Osmain. And I believe that's how you say it, Chroma from Leesburg, Georgia. Yeah, I, I think it's a numbers game because, one, in, if, they, if they could land one of Henderson or Lewis, they could always sit – uh, sit back and wait for maybe a kid out of the portal. So many things can happen. I really like Chroma. I think he's one of the best running backs that I've watched. Um, and I always feel like can circle back on the kid. Uh, but Henderson and Lewis, uh, Lewis, the relationship with Pat Sertain at American Heritage uh, is going to continue to keep them in it with him. And then if Henderson picks FSU, FSU could shoot for the stars and try to land two basically five-star running backs. So that puts – the numbers at a crunch if they were able to land one or both of those guys uh if they don't land either of them they could always come back but i i think that it comes down to numbers right now okay and then of course you know a lot of people uh are anticipating that you know florida state's going to be heavily involved with wide receiver jamie french from jacksonville mandarin high school uh you know, listen, he's coveted by everyone in the, in America. He was committed to Alabama for a while. 
uh, decommitted after Saban retired, or actually may have decommitted before the season was even over. Uh, but certainly a guy that had a high interest in uh, Alabama. But where do you see him trending right now? Uh, Alabama, I think he's Ohio State. Um, you know, there's ties between his um, seven on seven team and the coaches up there uh, at Ohio State. He's on the same seven on seven team that uh, Jeremiah Smith was on, the same seven on seven team that um, the wide receiver they landed two years ago from American Heritage. So there are ties. Florida State is in on him. He does have the relationship with quarterback Tramel Jones. I don't think this thing, even if he decides early, is over. Uh, I think he's a guy that is going to take his visits during the season. He'll probably show up to some FSU games. Uh, They'll be in it till the end. You know, I've been told that he wants to stay closer to home. So I think that could also have an impact that uh, Florida State's a lot closer to um, Jacksonville than, uh, you know, he is to Ohio State. Yeah. Well, and then uh, one of his teammates is another guy on your stock down report. And this is a guy I think we might talk about in a couple months, uh, particularly once we get to the football season where Florida State stock could go back up. But yep. that is Hilton Stubbs from Jacksonville Mandarin. Now, obviously, he, you know, he's talked to us uh, – it's extensively about his recruitment. We had him on a reeling them in about a month ago. Uh, you know, one of the things he said to me, Fish, that was important to him is stability at the head coaching spot. And he did tell us he likes Florida, yeah. uh, which stood out to me. Uh, and we, he know he also likes Florida State. Now, listen, most experts think that Napier is going to get run out of town by December of this year. Uh, I don't know if that's the case, and I've been told by a fairly uh, substantial Gator booster that he would have to have a horrific year to get run because of his contract, even after this year. But let's assume that the Gators do struggle uh, in 2024, and the emphasis to get Napier out of the program, uh, leading the program, becomes a real deal. Do you think that helps FSU with Stubbs? I mean, first off, I never thought a school would pay $75 million to get rid of a coach. So $35 million doesn't seem that bad or whatever. I know it's not $75 million to right. Gatorland. And, I mean, they they like to pull the trigger quick on coaches there. I, I That's one of those one recruitments you just let it play out. You know, if, you know he likes Florida State Hilton. I just – there's something about Florida. I don't know if he grew up a Gator fan – uh, you know, Jacksonville being close to Gainesville. There's something where he feels like he likes UF. Everything I've heard is a kid's more that UF is more of a team that he's like growing up. So that's why I have the Gators as a top team. But that could all change. I mean, if Florida ha- does end up hiring a new head coach, who's to say that that head coach wants to recruit him? Maybe he doesn't fit their scheme or what they're doing. So he could fall into Florida State's lap. It's happened before. I You go back to Greg Reed. Greg Reed was committed to Florida, and they stayed on him, and, and Florida started to drop off a little bit, and the FSU had the momentum. So sometimes a really good season and that other coaching staff uh, falling by the wayside helps you pull a kid like this. Yep. Well, listen, he's also a kid that he has continued to pick up more and more offers nationally. And I actually asked him during that podcast, "If uh, listen, are you, is your potential list of schools growing? And he seemed to indicate that it was. But I told him on this podcast that I don't think he's leaving the state of Florida. No. And uh, more than that, I don't think he's going more than two hours away from, uh, well, but, I can make it to Jacksonville in two hours. I don't know if anybody else can. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, let's say, yeah, I don't think he's going any more than three hours from home. Hey, highway Just patrolman a, out there. Uh, that is Pat Burnham well, going 95 am, you know, on I-10. I am, I am wearing a Van Halen T-shirt, yeah. so I, I can't drive 55. That's true. Yeah. Yes. I, I kind of like more that 77 to the 80 range. On <laughs> but all right, so another guy on your stock down. I think this is another guy, Fish, that you and I – Love as a football player. Uh, Jershon Newton from Central uh, Catholic High School in Clearwater. To me, he's kind of a bigger ver- bigger version of Dallas Gold. He's a little bit thicker than Dallas uh, physically, but they're both about the same size, just different body types. But he's a, he's a guy that 
I watch his film and I want somebody to sign him just because he, he's going to find a way to play somewhere on your football team. And you just look at the family. His brother is about to be a first round pick for Illinois. And the family's had, this is one family that's had a ton of kids uh, go to college. I, I recommend that they never allow me to date any of the daughters in that family because I will mess that family tree up. There will be no more Newtons playing football, <laughs> but they have a lot of them. Uh, in that family that have played college football. They played at USF. They, like I said, one's at Illinois right now. I think he's a type of kid that could play on Sundays. Eventually he's a great athlete. Um, he could play wide receiver. He could play corner. He could play safety. I just think these type of guys that are, that can play multiple positions at a high level and come from good programs, Clearwater central Cat Catholics, a very good program. You know, they, uh, that this kid, uh, you watch him, he's led that team to um, either the state semifinals or state finals in back-to-back -back years. Uh, his teams do very well, and he's a main reason why he's the best player on their football team. Yep. Yeah, he, he, he's going to be fun to watch somewhere in college. He's going to play a lot of football for somebody. He's just I like, the, like, he's just like Dallas Golden to me. He's a guy that uh, he doesn't may, maybe not fit the uh, typical quarterback uh, at the college level, uh, a little bit short at six foot, uh, but at least you know, listen, Jordan Travis wasn't bigger, much bigger than six foot. Uh, but listen, I think he's a kid that will, whether it's running back, wide receiver, DB. I know you got, you think he'll be a DB in college. Uh, I listen, I think he finds his way to play. He's just one of those kids. So uh, hopefully, Florida State can get back in on him if that's what they feel is best. Uh, all right, so listen, we've got some. We can talk about some guys that are going to come to FSU this weekend for Legacy Weekend. Uh, but I want to talk. Start out with talking with you about a, a guy that's not coming, but is committed to Florida State. Uh, offensive tackle, offensive guard Solomon Thomas from uh, the Jacksonville area has been committed to Florida State for a couple of months now. Uh, announced some spring visits that did not include Florida State, uh, and I think maybe that was done for a reason. Uh, leverage uh, in the in the land of NIL, uh, but he's going to visit South Carolina this weekend, LSU uh, next week, Florida for two days on April fourth and fifth. I mean fifth and sixth, and Miami for two days on twelfth and thirteenth. He does not list Florida State as a visit. My assumption is going to be that he is going to be here for the spring showcase on April twentieth. Uh, he's told Florida State he's going to take official visits. Uh, what is your level? Do you have any level of concern with Solomon unless he doesn't show up on April 20th? If he doesn't show up, you got to have concerns, but he's committed right now. He's been on campus multiple times. Um, he, you know, he had, he had no reason to commit to Florida state early. I mean, he was already getting offers for, by everybody in the country. So, um, until there's reason to be worried, uh, the reality is this is recruiting now, uh, that how it is. There's no, Commitment only means really you're holding a spot anyway until they sign on the dotted line. We've just seen this too much. Um, we're in, in this day and age of where guys commit, commit does not mean what it used to mean. So I'm not really worried right now. Uh, but if he decide if we if you don't see him on campus uh, in the spring and also in the summertime for camps and stuff, then you start to worry. Yeah. All right. Well, another guy. You great segue into this, but. Uh, Florida commit Jalen Wiggins told me this morning uh, that he will be on Florida State's campus this weekend for another unofficial visit to Florida State. He's been committed to Florida since January 15th of this year, but has this will now, I believe, Fish be his second time, at least second time on Florida State's campus since he's committed. And he's, it was on Florida State's campus several times last year where do you think this is going with Jalen Wiggins at this point in his recruitment and is it just the fact that Florida State's having a big recruiting weekend they're right there in his backyard or do you think this is uh they're a threat to Florida right now yeah I, I think Wiggins gonna end up in FSU's class if especially if Florida um has a season that we expect I definitely this is one of the ones that I really could see going south for them he's a local kid uh, you talk about it's, it's tough to commit to a coach, uh, one, that's on the hot seat, or, or two, if they bring somebody else in uh, that this kid hasn't had a relationship with. This has happened so many times. You saw it with um, Timmy Jernigan. Uh, Timmy Jernigan 
was all Gator, all Gator, and then FSU had a great season that season, and he ended up at FSU. Uh, this kid's in their backyard. FSU's got to keep the top kids home, I believe. Uh, if they, you know, it's not like it used to be in Tallahassee where you have five, six guys every year uh, that were big time, but this kid's good enough uh, at a major position of need. So I expect them uh, not only to uh, have a shot. I I'd be surprised if they didn't land him in the end. Right, and then let's let's keep let's stick with the defensive end, uh, defensive end spot. There's another defensive end that's supposed to be on campus this weekend, and that is Javion Hilson, who committed back uh, to Florida State back on January 16th. He had been committed to Alabama. That one was a, a post Nick Saban decommitment. Uh, all if you read, uh, you can go out and throw Javion Hilson's name in the Google search, and all you're going to hear about is Alabama trying to. Uh, Flip him back. What are your thoughts there? Can FSU hold on to him? Uh, it seems as if, uh, you know, he got the big Caden Proctor transferred to Iowa. Uh, yep. Now he's transferring back to Alabama based on his text last night. It seems like what the, it seems like there's a lot of positivity around Kalen DeBoer now that he's been on campus a couple of months. How do you think that's going to affect Hilson's commitment to Florida State at this yeah. point? I mean, that's not a surprise. I mean, the guy's, I personally think he's a really good coach and that thing, this is how it is. Everybody panics when a coach, you know, Saban's been part of that program for a very long time. Nobody knew who the new guy is. Hilson's a kid that's very similar to a guy that's going in the NFL draft this year in Dallas Thomas. Is it Dallas Tom Turner? Um, the kid from Alabama that's yep. going to be a first rounder. They're very similar. Uh, we had a chance to watch the – the McCray kid and the Hilson kid last year in the state finals, one had more talent and upside, but didn't do anything. Hilson was a guy that was constantly in the backfield. Even when he wasn't getting sacks, he was getting pressure. He's an elite pass rusher. FSU needs a pass. Everybody needs a pass rusher. Let's be honest, but he's one of the best in the country. He is going to only get better. He's going to get bigger, stronger, and faster. Uh, so I, he'll, you know, FSU is in a good spot because he's committed to them, but, when you're that good at a major position of need, people aren't going to stop until you sign. So yep. we shouldn't be surprised by this. Yep. And listen, they're, they're going to get some other big names on campus this weekend. Uh, Caleb Cunningham, the four-star receiver from Mississippi, that a lot of people think is going to be hard to get out of the state of Mississippi. Uh, if he comes back, as he's supposed to, he's told us he will be here. Uh, this will be his second time on campus this year, I believe. What? Uh, you know, do you do you read anything into that? I mean, are you hearing the same thing that I'm hearing that it's going to be hard to get him out of uh, Ole Miss and Mississippi State? I mean, I just that state FSU just every even when they've had guys they found on their rocks. Um, I remember a couple of years ago FSU found a D lineman at one of their uh, elite camps in the summertime. They found the kid. The kid was committed all year, and then all of a sudden, one of those state schools came in. Until they pull somebody outside of Cam Akers, and that was kind of a uh, one of those situations where both coaches were on the hot seat and he didn't like one of the two schools, so they landed him. It's going to be very tough to put Kale about. Yep. It's good to – hey, listen, anytime a kid's that talented, you throw the line in the water and hope you get that big fish, but who knows. I, I think the odds are they probably won't land him, but there's – if Florida State wants to get back to where – they're winning championships. Those are the type of kids you got to land. So you got to try at least, you know, take your shot. Well, and you and I always talk about the fact that if you can get a kid on campus, you've got a shot. Yeah. Uh, and they are going to get on, uh, supposed to get a kid on campus that has not had Florida State uh, listed a, a, among his favorite teams. But I believe this will be his first visit to Florida State. Could be his second. But a four-star offensive guard prospect at IMG, Caden Strayha Strayhorn. Uh, do you think Florida State can get put themselves in a position to compete for Strayhorn? Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, yeah, he, yeah, he's a talented prospect that's been playing basically. You know, he'll be like a either four year starter, or played a lot of minutes or a lot of reps. Um, I think they'll have a shot. He he hasn't really mentioned FSU until recently, so it's going to be interesting. They have to, uh, you know, I think the rule of thumb is get them on campus three times before. Uh, their summer before they there's they go into their fall season you know into their season in the fall if they could get them on campus multiple times outside of this first visit you got to start to like their chances 
Yep. Yep. All right. Well, listen, uh, we've got it. Uh, if you go to the Osceola.com or Florida state.rivals.com, we will have a complete list of who's we expect to be on. Uh, it'll be an updated list through even Friday night as we get more confirmations from who's going to be on FSU's campus for uh, legacy weekend. We do not want to go through the whole list. We want you to go to the Osceola.com and check on those the, the other names that will be on campus. Fish, uh, a couple more questions for you on kids that are not going to be on campus this weekend as far as we know but are involved with Florida State. Uh, Kamari Williams, a uh, wide receiver prospect for 2025 from South Florida, has FSU in his top seven they announced earlier this week. Uh, as I looked at their receiver board, uh, and the way I look at it anyway, when you look at the Caleb Cunninghams of the world that are on the FSU's receiver board, uh, to me this seems like a down the line guy. Is that am I reading that right for Florida for Florida State? Yeah, I definitely think he's one of those guys that's down the line. Um, one of the things with him, he's also transferred uh, now from he was at Atlantic. He's now going to Chaminade. Atlantic wasn't really a passing team. You you recruited him based on physical talent. It'll be interesting to see how he does this spring. He's one of those guys that I think could have a monster spring, and then all of a sudden he does move up that recruiting board. All right. Then, you know, obviously we have talked about the fact that Florida State needs to li- uh, needs impact players at linebacker. Uh, you know, uh, you know, Deloach was really good, but you know, there was a time and place where year in and year out, Florida State had a one of the country's most dominant linebackers almost every year. Uh, a guy that you really like, TJ Alford, is going to commit somewhere on March the 30th. He has taken unofficial visits, and these are, when I mention these teams, these are teams that are among his top teams and among the teams he's selecting from. He's been to Miami. He's been to UCF. He's been to Tennessee. He's been to Florida. He's going to Ohio State on March 23rd. Then he will be at Florida State on March 28th and committing on March 30th. Do you read anything into the fact that Florida State is getting the last unofficial visit before he commits? The good thing is uh, he's at Vero Beach and FSU's had success. They now have two kids in back-to-back years committed. I know one's still got another year. Uh, that school, they, they pulled in uh, the wide receiver last year. FSU has a major need at linebacker, as you know. Um, the fact that they're going to get the last visit, you got to like their chances uh, of pulling a kid like that. He has taken some visits to, I know, to Miami, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But I think FSU has a legitimate shot at uh, pulling him in. Yeah. Now, listen, I, I was fired up for Florida State when I realized that they were getting that March 28th visit because it will be the last school that has a chance to make an impression. Uh, you know, you used to say you used to you know, the old wives tell for lack of a better term or better example. Uh, you know, the wives it used to be that, Hey, you wanted to get the, you wanted to get the last official visit, right. With a kid uh, in December uh, in January, back when or in January, actually, when the, there was a, no early signing date. You want to get that last January visit so that you let, get that last impression on a kid. So uh, maybe that's foreboding for Florida State. Uh, uh, I tend, you know, I tend to think that that leans in Florida State's favor that he wants to get here last. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. But listen, I think it's a good thing that they are getting a chance to leave a last impression on him. And then Fish, I got to ask you this: We have, you know, uh, I thought there would be uh, from fans and industry experts alike, I thought there would be a lot more uh, talk about the early national signing date moving up a couple of weeks. It's going to be on December 4th this year. Uh, obviously, one of the impacts are, of that are going to be commitments are going to be taken earlier. Now you see guys that are going to be taking official visits in May. I've seen May dates. I think I saw a couple of April official visits. Uh uh, late April official visits that kids are planning. Uh, what is your take on the early national signing date moving up uh, essentially 11 days, I guess? Um, 11, um, you know, well, actually a little bit longer. So almost two weeks. It was, the, it was the 20th last year, the 20th of December. So it's moved up almost two and a half weeks, two weeks. What are your thoughts on the national sign, early national signing date moving early? And how do you think it will impact recruiting? Yeah, I don't think they really helped it. I I think if they're going to put it early, just put it in August, get it over with, and then have February uh, when it's kind of slow. They, they they just I don't know. Somebody in the NCA office has to start following the NFL on how they 
handle like having these things done right because NFL seems to get everything right. College football seems to get everything wrong and still be successful. It makes no sense to me. Yeah, uh, it's uh, you know they, there's a lot of things that got to be fixed with college football right now. Uh, but I do think I, I do think that moving that up is going to help. You're going to see kids making decisions earlier. It's going to help coaches handle bowl preparation. Uh, if, if you've got a bowl team, obviously transfer portal opens. You can clearly focus on the portal after that. You don't have the portal and national signing day going on at the same time where you're having to juggle both portal kids and high school kids. So I think, I think it's going to, I think that's going to be a good change for that impact. But listen, it's like Kirby. I think it was Kirby smart that said, uh, listen, somebody's going to be trying to get ready for a championship game and trying to, to nail, nail down, finish off their recruiting class. So I think it's going to be interesting to see, but fish, I know you got to go. I want to thank you for joining us. We had a really comprehensive chat. Uh, yeah. If you want to read a fish's stock up, stock down, or uh, he's got a lot of good information on our message boards. Go to theosceola.com and check us out. And we will be back next week to follow up on uh, FSU Legacy Weekend with Fish. But Fish, thanks for joining us, and we will see you guys later. Take it easy, man. Your Seminoles kick off the 2024 football season in Dublin, Ireland, as they face the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets in the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Join fellow Florida State fans on a trip you won't soon forget. Game tickets for the August 24th matchup are now available through Florida State Athletics Ticket Office and selling fast. Visit SeminolesToIreland.com. That's Seminoles, the number two, Ireland.com. And go Knowles!